to the Cedar Crest player parent athlete meeting. My name is Rick Dissinger. I'm the Cedar Crest High School Athletic Director. I'd like to start off by sharing my screen. So today's uh, segment, segment one for our player parent meeting is going to cover the code of conduct review. The format for today's meeting is going to consist of three video segments. Your job is to watch each segment in its entirety. Please answer the question following the end of a segment before moving on to the next segment. We ask that you please complete all segments on or before Wednesday, April 7th. The purpose of our video meeting is to take the place of our live in-person meeting. We want to review and highlight the code of conduct all of the sections in the player parent manual. This is the manual that you already have received, signed, and read through from your coach. We also want to provide an update on the COVID-19 modifications and guidelines in segment two. And then in segment three, we're going to provide some clarity on the athletic training policies and procedures. I'd like to start off with the section one of our show, which is our code of conduct review. Again, this is this information is contained in the player parent code of conduct something that you should have received in an online version from your coach. Everybody has signed this prior to the start of the season. This will simply be a review of some of the key sections of that document. I'd like to remind everybody about the importance of sportsmanship found on page four of that document. We want to represent ourselves, our family, and our school to the best of our ability. Always remember that sportsmanship matters. People take notice of the little things, and we want to be doing all of those little things to the best of our ability. Also want to highlight the importance of social media, the use of social media by our athletes. This is something that is in the school code of conduct and any acts meant to demean the school team athletes can be reviewed and face school consequences. Next, I'd like to talk about the chain of command and some communication guidelines, which are found on page five of our document. We always want to start off with athlete to coach as our first line of communication. We want to teach our young men and women responsibility and the importance of communicating well with their coaches. If you are unhappy with the treatment of your son or daughter by a coach, those are the circumstances under which you would want to contact the coach. Ways in which you can help the child improve their performance are things that you would want to talk about with the coach. Concerns about your child's behavior in practice, contests, are things you'd want to talk about with the coach. Things that you do not want to talk about nor discuss with the coach, it's inappropriate certain concerns. Playing time. Playing time discussions should be between the coach and the athlete only. Team strategy, the X, the O's, the play calling. Team selection and discussion of any other athlete. Coaches will only talk about your son or daughter with you. We wouldn't want you talking about other athletes with the coach and the coach talking about other athletes with you. Please keep these things in mind if you want to consider contacting the coach. Remember, the only time we want to have player and parent meet with the coach is when their child is being treated inappropriately. If things cannot be resolved after a player coach meeting, parents can contact the coach, players can contact the athletic director for continuation of any discussions. Very important to understand school attendance. Athletes must be on time and in school in order to participate in both practices and any athletic events. Because of the hybrid schedule this year, we need players to be in person on in person days. When they are virtual and supposed to be virtual, they should be attending those classes virtually. We cannot have students self choose to be virtual on an in person attendance day. Even though that day would count as an attendance for school, unless there has been an excuse or a reason given uh, by a parent or the athletic director, players that choose to work from home on days that they should be in person will not be able to attend practice. If a student is going to be late to school for any reason, it should be because of a doctor appointment. They may arrive late because of a doctor appointment early in the morning. They may re return to school or leave early because of a doctor appointment. Those notes should be communicated 
to the athletic director as well as the attendance secretary. And whenever possible, at least one day prior, students should notify the athletic director of a potential dismissal, early dismissal and appointment so that they can be cleared to participate in activity the following day. Ac academic eligibility is found on page seven. Academics must come first. We must remember that players that are ineligible because they are failing two or more classes or in the event of potential seniors, uh, a senior that only has four credits must be passing all four credits. Part of the requirement for participation is that students are passing at least four credits. So any senior that has less than the full load mm -hmm. must be passing four credits. The athletic ineligibility runs Monday through Sunday and those students are able to participate in a practice if their coach allows, but may not participate in any athletic events while they are ineligible. Next segment is regarding our sports injuries, the role of the athletic trainer, Mr. Seldenridge, Mr. Doherty will be going over some of this in segment three, but I just want to highlight a couple parts of this uh, athletic injuries. Any injury must be reported immediately to a coach and then to the trainer. We ask that athletes that are not feeling feeling well because of something that happened at a practice must communicate to their coach. Only our athletic trainer and or our team doctor can determine whether an athlete is eligible to return to play. Athletes cannot self-determine. Right? Anytime an athlete would see a doctor outside of the school, the athlete must get a note for the ability to return to play. It cannot simply be a note to return to school. The doctor must state that the athlete may return to athletic competition. For any away meets, I'd like to talk about bus travel. Because of the COVID situation, all coaches have been asked to have a seating chart. All players must sit, remain seated in the seat that they are assigned with a mask on at all times. There will be no eating on the bus. Players may have a quick drink, pull down their mask to hydrate and then put the mask back up, but we cannot allow eating on the bus right now. If a player would like to return home from an away event with a parent and with a parent only, uh, we ask that you please have a note signed by the parent stating that the student will return home from this athletic event with their parent. Only parent and athlete. We cannot allow friends to travel with other parents to and from a contest. If you have any questions, this finishes our segment one code of conduct review. Please don't hesitate to contact myself, Mr. Dissinger, the athletic director at Cedar Crest. We ask that you please answer the question after this slide in order to continue on to segments two and three. Please answer the question that is on the coming screen and then follow up with section two. Thank you. This ends section one.